we did these two properties, symmetry, which sort of leads to the possibility of a pitchfork bifurcation, and then this thing about dissipation. We didn't do what we have typically done when we study 2D systems, which is look at the fixed points and analyze the linear stability of the fixed points. So maybe we should go back and do that. Technically, a system is called dissipative if the volume just doesn't stay the same. So you could have systems where the volume of phase space actually grows. You could have systems where the volume, how the volume grows or shrinks depends on where you are in phase space. So for some, sometimes it's growing, sometimes it's shrinking. And you do need to be careful in how you interpret that because some people have interpreted that when the volume shrinks, then you're always going to a fixed point, but that is not the case. And Lorenz did careful analysis to show that that wasn't the case for his system. And that's how he concluded that it wasn't a numerical error that he was seeing. I would have hated to use computers in the 60s. Super frustrating. Right? If you think MATLAB's frustrating, imagine having to wait days and use punch cards or whatever. All right, so let's look at the fixed points. If you look at the equations, there's x, y, and z in all of them. So the origin is a fixed point. So x, y, z, zero, zero, zero is a fixed point. We often just assume, and I alluded to this up above, but that the other two parameters are fixed and fixed at some certain values. And then we let R vary the Rayleigh number. B doesn't even have a name. You might call it the aspect ratio number, but whatever. The origin is a fixed point for all R, but what stability type is it? We'll get to that. There's other fixed points too. And we could get that just by analyzing it. You could do it. I'll just tell you what it is. X and Y equals plus or minus square root B R minus one, which only exists if R is greater than one. And Z is R minus one. And Lorenz gave these a name. He called these fixed points that were not the origin. The, the origin is just like nothing's happening. He called these other fixed points C plus and C minus. C for convection. And maybe C plus meant that it was convection in some positive sense. And then the other was convection in some negative sense, maybe clockwise and counterclockwise. Doesn't quite matter. What you'll notice is that if we think of R going to one from the positive side, so from large values of R down to one, C plus and C minus coalesce with the origin. In fact, we have a pitchfork bifurcation at R equals one, right? If you have two kind of symmetric pairs of fixed points and they merge with something, seems like a pitchfork bifurcation. And you could show that it really is. As we're increasing R, let's say from zero, R has to be greater than or equal to zero. It's one of these non-negative numbers. As we increase from zero, then out of the origin, there come two points. We don't know stability yet, so we should look at the local stability of the origin. We could look at the linearization. You could just read it off by ignoring the two quadratic terms. So we get x dot equals sigma y minus x, y dot equals rx minus y, and z dot equals negative bz. So we've just ignored the quadratic terms because we're linearizing. So z is particularly easy. This would give us, right, z goes to zero exponentially fast because b is positive, which means we just have to analyze the x, y part. If we put it in the form that we've done for analyzing 2D systems, what do we get? We get negative sigma, sigma, r, negative one, times x, y. So use our 2D methods. So we already know that the Z direction is stable. What about X and Y? So the way that we have done this is we'll look at the trace of that two by two matrix and the determinant. So look at this, right? We'll call that matrix A. The trace is negative sigma plus one. Sigma is always positive. So that means this is less than zero. What about delta? Delta is the determinant of A, and that is, it ends up being sigma one minus R. If R is greater than one, we have a delta that's negative, 
And if you remember from our diagram, this means that for r greater than one, origin is a saddle point, at least in the x, z directions. We're calling it a saddle point, but what is it really? In x and y, one direction is stable, the other is unstable. So it means in 3D, origin has two stable and one unstable direction. In any case, it's not asymptotically stable for r greater than one. That's for r greater than one. What about for r less than one? r less than one, delta is going to be positive, tau is negative. So we either have a stable spiral or a stable node. And to figure out, we need to calculate well, that dividing line, which is tau squared minus four delta. Tau squared minus four delta is what? Sigma plus one squared minus four sigma one minus r. We could rewrite that. This is sigma minus one squared plus four sigma r. This thing is positive. This thing is positive. So this is positive. So if r is less than one, the origin, it's a stable node. It's a stable node in the xy plane, but it means in 3D, origin is stable. All three directions are converging onto it. And in fact, the origin is globally stable. Every trajectory approaches the origin as time goes to infinity. That's what we mean by globally stable. We'll show this. We haven't yet shown it just by showing that it's locally stable, but we can show that it is globally stable. So this is for R less than one. So the Raleigh number less than one, hence no uh, limit cycles or strange attractors. How can we show this? We can prove it using the Lyapunov function. If you remember from an earlier lecture, we said you could use this idea of a Lyapunov function. It's like an energy-like function that if you can construct such a function, then the point at which the function is zero is going to be asymptotically stable. So we could do that. So the Lyapunov function we'll use, and the notation is to use V. So do not get this confused with volume. This is the Lyapunov function. It's a function of X, Y, and Z. So it's a scalar function at every point. It looks a lot like the distance squared but we put a one over sigma in front of that x squared term. And remember what the Lyapunov function is, it's like an energy-like function in a system with friction. It, you wanna construct it so that it keeps decreasing along trajectories. In this case, if we were to look at this, if, if we didn't have that sigma out in front, then level sets of V would be spheres. In this case, level sets of V are ellipsoids surrounding the origin. So here's a, Kind of gives you an idea that that's an ellipsoid. And if V is decreasing, then for some point that starts on this, at some later time, the ellipsoid is shrinking down. So what we want to show, we need to show that V dot is less than or equal to zero and V equals zero at the origin. Well, you could just plug in X, Y, and Z equals zero and see that, okay, V equals zero at the origin. So check, now we just have to calculate what V dot is. So we'll calculate it. And remember, this is just for R less than one. Something interesting happens for R greater than one and for R much greater than one, other things can happen. So for any point other than the origin, what do we have? V dot, which is right, DV DT. We wanna calculate what that is. We've defined that V. Let's take the time derivative. And I'll put the factor of two on the other side. So this will be one half dv dt equals x x dot over sigma plus y y dot plus z z dot. And then just plug in what we have from the Lorenz equations. Let me remind us over here. y dot equals rx minus y minus xz z dot equals x, y minus b, z. Plug everything in. We've got y, remember, because there's that sigma there. So this becomes y, x minus x squared. What do we get for this other term? 
r y x minus y squared minus x c y. And for the final term, we have minus b z squared plus x z y. And I've written it that way just so that you could see that these two will cancel out. We can collect some terms here and we'll see we get r plus one x y minus x squared minus y squared minus b z squared. We can complete the square and show that this will be something that's negative, at least when r is less than one. So we will rewrite that this one is already kind of taken care of. We know that that's going to be less than or equal to zero. It's just we got to worry about this part. We could rewrite that. So this is x minus r plus 1 over 2y squared minus 1 minus r plus 1 over 2 squared then times y squared minus bc squared. So this is something that if you look at it, each of the terms in turn, this will be greater than zero for r less than one and same for that. So we get something that's less than or equal to zero for r less than one. So we've done it. And when could it be zero? It's only zero at the origin. So the Lyapunov function decreases for all trajectories, meaning they approach the origin. So v x, y, and z as a function of time goes to zero, which means that x, y, and z goes to the origin. So for r less than one, the origin is globally stable. That is, it is the attractor. It's not strange. It's rather boring. You just sort of, everything just sort of goes down to nothing. It is the attractor. So we know at least what isn't happening for r less than one. We don't get that interesting behavior of the Lorenz system. But next time we'll look at other cases. We'll look at r greater than one when the origin is a saddle and then look at the sort of sequence of bifurcations that occur and discuss the, the strange attractor.